These are our levels of glyphosate that you can have in, uh, it's permitted in our food. Again, remember a tenth of a part per million or less is uh, an active antibiotic. And you can see, you should ask the question, why is glyphosate in uh, uh, our oil seed crops like, like soybeans only half as toxic as it is in canola. We can we permit twice as much glyphosate in soybean, refined soybean oil, 40 parts per million, but we limit it to 20 parts per million in canola oil. Why is it so much more toxic in one than the other? Well, you realize very quickly that none of this is based on scientific study. Our level for glyphosate tolerance in 1974 was a tenth of a part per million. What got us up to this type of a situation where we're up as much as, as 400 parts per million? And you realize it's not because of scientific studies, but it's because the companies came to them and said in order to sell this product, we have to have you raise the tolerance levels. These are the May levels that they uh, approved last year. And not based on science or safety, but on what we're finding. So Chuck Benbrook at uh, Washington State University calculated based on the USDA levels that they were finding in soybeans, what our dietary risk index would be for all of the different pesticides. Glyphosates, 82.7. Neonicotinoid insecticides, 14.9. All of the other pesticides together are less than 0.1 as far as what you're getting in your food. So we see glyphosate bioaccumulates in the body. You have levels of 76 to 166 parts per billion in breast milk. How's that baby ever going to develop an immune system that never gets the probiotic that that breast milk is so critical for? And then you see the tragedy that we're finding in Yakima, Washington right now, where they started in 2010 or 2009 dumping in glyphosate formulations, rodeo, in the end of the three rivers for invasive weed control and never paid any attention to this quote-unquote safe chemical as a very strong endocrine hormone disruptor. So you see this big spike now, an epidemic in anencephaly, spinal bifida, cleft palates, deformed appendages. The uh, nurse practitioner that blew the whistle on this situation stated that in her 30 years of delivering babies in Yakima County, she had delivered one baby with anencephaly. One month, she delivered 23. Mm. We now have 2,4-D, Roundup Ready, crops approved. This is the legacy we left with 2,4-D in Vietnam from our Agent Orange, which is 2,4-D and 2,4-5-T. This is the Holocaust that we're experiencing that we hope no one else has to. This is celiac disease and children in Canada requiring hospitalization. This is the curve that represents the adoption of Roundup Ready Canola in 1997 and the increasing use of glyphosate from the official data. You can take every one of these diseases that are following that same curve that have a 0.95 to 0.99 correlation with the glyphosate and the GMO crops relative to the incidence and severity of these diseases. Half of those, the best control that we have for treatment-wise or remediation is a fecal transplant. 
restoring the gut microbiome. Those genes are promiscuous. They can be picked up by our gut microflora. They can then be moved into the bloodstream and attached to ours so that we actually become pesticide producers ourselves. Sheffield County, uh, Quebec, or Township, Quebec, that 93% of the women that were tested contained the Bt insecticide in their blood system. 70% passed it to their developing child across the placental barrier. 